I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks. That is what we are making today. So I asked you to get ready your jam jar and some cotton. People are saying hello and a matching hook. Hello, hello everyone. So this is going to be a live tutorial. So if you are watching this live on Friday the 3rd of April then of course you're going to have to bear with me okay I would like you to make it along with me but should you <laughs> lose your <laughs> instructions at one point then of course there's no way you are going to be able to pause this okay so just bear with me watch the rest of the live and then of course after the live you are going to be able to see the afterlife, you know, and that means you will be able to pause and rewind and do whatever you normally do during your, um, you know, when you're watching a tutorial of mine, okay? So this is what we are making. So I decided to make something really nice for my hooks so I can, um, you know, sort of organize them nicely. So they're not sort of bunched together in a jar. This way I can actually look at them really not well and I can see that, you know, which size they are and, and I can just take the correct one out of it. So that is what we are going to be doing. So shall we get started? Okay, right, I need to put this like so. Hi everyone, I can now see I can now see your comments as well. So I have ready here my example, my other jam jar. I have also ready <laughs> a cup of tea and it was blind dip tea. So it was this one, Pucker Revitalize. So let me just have a sip. Mm. <laughs> and so we have here my cotton, the hook, and also scissors and a needle, of course, you will need as well. So, let's get started. I am going to get started with doing a slip stitch, a slip knot, a slip knot. <laughs> there we go. So do your slip knot whichever way you can. Insert your hook and we are going to close up the slip knot. Then we are going to do six chains. One, two, three, four, five and six. Then looking at your chain you go back to the first chain that you did. You go into that. I always try and pick up two, but we'll see how that goes. There we go. Okay, so I've got one under here and two over there. And we are going to do a slip stitch. So pull the thread through and again as well. So you've got a circle here which is a little bit bigger than what we normally do because we normally do about a chain four size circle. So this actually will be a hole where you can put your bigger hook in. Then we are going to do 11 single crochets. So first of all, you have to start with a chain. That doesn't count really. So then we do 11 single crochets into the circle. So open up your circle really well, go into it and bring up your loop, yarn over and do your single crochet. So remember, I am doing, <coughs> I am doing American terms and these are single crochets. <laughs> no, I don't think Dirk has made an organiser. <laughs> oh, dear me. 
actually he's still doing the washing up. <laughs> or he should be. <laughs> okay, so two, four, six, eight, nine V's I can see. Ten. Eleven. So these are now our eleven single crochet. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten V's. 10 V's and 11 V's, sorry. Let's count again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, right? So you go under the 11th V and you do a slip stitch. This now means that we have made an extra slip stitch here. So now we have 12 slip stitches going. See, this is why... I, when I film these things, I say so many wrong words. We now have 12 Vs going around the edge of our work. Okay. Oh my goodness. Right. Like I said, this is the first hole. Now we are going to create another circle of holes, as you can see here, to put more hooks in. So we are going to do a chain three, one, two, and three. And this counts as a double crochet, the first two chains, and then a chain for making a little space. So we are now going to do, in every V around, you are going to do a double crochet. So you're starting with this one here, right? So here we go into there. Pencil holder. This could also be a pencil holder for your, um, you know, for your office. And that's what we are doing throughout. So you're going to chain and in the next stitch you do a double crochet. You chain, next stitch a double crochet. So we are doing 12 double crochets. Each time we are doing a chain in between. Okay, look. So I'm making holes, see? So we are going to continue that all along our circle. So there we go. So who is following along? Is there anybody following along? <laughs> oh, am I going too quick? Here we go. Okay. So chain one, double crochet in the next stitch. Chain one. Oh, great, great, great. And then of course here that chain which counts as the stitch coming out of this V here. We are going to make that count and that is our next double crochet. And then what I try to do is I sort of go under the next V. There we go. No, that's not in. See, this one is difficult to get sometimes. So I'm just going to try and get in there whichever way I can. There we go. Okay. There we go. And you do a slip stitch. Right. Look. Okay. Now, to make sure that um, to make sure that your holes are going to stand open, we are going to do single crochets in the chain spaces. So we are going to do a chain one, then into the chain space, you are going to do three single crochets in each chain space. So before we had 12, now we have 24, and now in this row, we are going to create 36 stitches. So three single crochets in each chain space. And as you can see, 
that is really opening them up. Can you see that? So these ones are nice and open, these ones aren't yet. And that way, of course, it will make it easy for our hooks to stand in them. <laughs> yes, trying to get into your jeans might be a problem in a few weeks. <laughs> oh dear. Now, has anyone watched Wednesday's video? Because in a moment um, you will need one of those floating jasmine face pads, face scrubbies. So if you haven't looked at uh, or you haven't watched Wednesday's video yet, I recommend you do that after this one because in a moment I am going to show you that actually, look, what have I put at the bottom of this one? Yep, a scrubby. <laughs> Yeah, they come in handy for all kinds of things. And I'm still putting three single crochets in each chain space. There we go. Right, nearly there. Look, see how lovely it is standing open now. Now, if you have um, a thinner yarn or a thicker yarn, you might just need to um, look at how far you are now uh, in a, you know, sort of in comparison to your opening of your jar, right? So um, I made this one another row, of course, and um, that's quite close to the edge, but that's fine because it still, you know, holds my... Uh, hooks so you might need to just amend the pattern slightly or doing half double crochets here or doing half double crochets here depending on of course the size of your jar and of course the uh, the, the cotton that you are using but also um, you know your tension and everything right so keep on measuring is important to make sure that yes, you can do that next row or no, you have to change it or something like that. Oh, I'm stuck now. See, these are all the things that normally happen during a video when I'm filming it. <laughs> and it's the same thing now, it all happens as well. <laughs> okay, so now we are at row five and we are going to chain four one, two, three, and four. And this time, like I said, you have 36 Vs on the outside of your work. So this time we are going to skip one and we are going to do a single crochet in the next one. Look, and that's made another hole. So we need to do the same thing. So chain two, skip one, single crochet in the next one. Okay, and we are going to continue like that. Chain two, skip one. Hang on, that's the one I'm skipping. This one here, single crochet. Chain two and skip and single crochet. So we do this all along our outside edge. I think my yarn split there. Yeah, let me just redo that one. There we go. Okay. So once again, in a moment, we are going to do another row and we are going to do single crochets in the chain space so that our openings are standing open nicely, okay? Because of course that will help um, for us to get our hooks in and out. Now, of course, if you, if you um, have those ergonomic hooks, 
you might just need to make all your holes a lot bigger okay but you can because obviously I am giving you this as an example you could use a bigger tin you could use uh, a bigger glass jar you know you can amend this according to the actual hooks that you have so if you want to make those holes bigger use a so this was a double crochet we could use a treble crochet more chains and then make your hole bigger okay so um Again, there's many possibilities with this pattern. And yes, you can make it identical, of course. But also, um, you know, I had in the picture, I had those, all those hooks. And of course, they represent your actual uh, collection of hooks. And of course, I can't know which ones you have. So you can, I'm sure, amend this to your own collections. And I'm still doing two chains, skip and single crochet. Two chains, skip and single crochet. Thank you, Corinne. Thank you. I do hope you enjoyed making those scrubbies. I thought they were, you know, just so adorable. And yes, they come in handy here now because you are going to need it for the bottom of your um, glass jar because obviously let me just finish so you do a chain no my yarn split here so you do your last two chains then here you're going to skip the first chain then you go into the next one and you do a slip stitch to finish the round okay so why I haven't attached this one yet so let me just take this off and show you so I have put one of my scrubbies in the bottom there yes it's really pretty like this and I don't mind that nobody sees it because obviously look you can still see the petals on the side okay uh, but I thought it was the perfect size to put inside the jar so that when you put your crochet hooks down into it it doesn't make a noise on the glass. Okay, right. <laughs> right, so look, it doesn't make a noise. If you do it here, that's not such a nice noise. So I thought that would make a nice sort of, um, you know, damper, dampener or whatever it's called uh, for the base of your tin. Um, of your jar also if you you could also do this in a tin for example and then um, you could put also something in there just to uh, you know make that nice and soft on the bottom for your crochet hooks I haven't attached this one yet because obviously I wanted to show you this but you can attach all of it with like hot glue gun or you know any glue that you might have and also what you could do is this is a glass jar obviously so this is pretty well I think it's pretty uh, but if you're using a tin uh, you could just keep going here right so you can just crochet the whole thing as well so then it's a real crocheted hook holder because it's completely crocheted okay so okay back to the tutorial so we are now sort of at the level where I need to start going along the side so no more working in our um, flat circle but we are going to start going down the side but first of all we need to set our openings so we are going to chain one and now this time we are going to do two single crochets in each chain space the reason for that is because of course we need less stitches for when we go down the side so we don't want to be increasing anymore so I am going to do two single crochets in each chain space yes that's a perfect idea to use a large mug look <clears throat> use your mug I'm just having a sip <laughs> Okay, so that's brilliant. That's a good idea. Or a flower pot. You could do this over a flower pot as well. 
you know. And, all, you know, I was thinking the other day I was chucking out um, an empty uh, tom tin, tin of tomatoes. So you could use that as well. You could put uh, something heavy in the bottom so it will stay down, you know. Yes, Stella, I thought it was a good idea. Plus, um, you know, it gives you the the opportunity to look at your hooks and go, OK, that's the one I need. And they don't you don't need to rummage around in them and stuff like that. So it looks really good. Uh, on a desk or even on your, um, you know, wherever you keep your yarn. You could open a shelf with some of these. You could put them in between. I've done mine in white, obviously. But what about multicolored or a color for, like, you know, that brand of hooks or that brand? You could have them color coordinated. You know, there's so many things you could do. I am doing this in cotton. But I think also it would work in, in um, you know, acrylic as well. Okay, so here we go. And I can already feel, obviously, that I haven't done enough stitches for keeping it flat, which is fine, because we obviously want to go down the side at the moment. There we go. See? Look, it's already going down. So before we had 48 stitches, now we have reduced it again to 36. Okay? And let me just... Yeah, that's two there. So I need to do a slip stitch here. There we go. Okay? And again, I am trying it out, as I always do with everything. You know, every row I want to try it. So there we go. So that's a good way that's going really well, this thing. Um, because although it's not fitting right now, the next row will ensure that it's going down the sides and that it will fit. So that is going to be okay. Now, the next row here, as you can see, I've made holes. And I thought initially I would put a ribbon through this, which you could do as a uh, decoration, tie it, and then it would stick. So the ribbon would be used just to, um, you know, keep it there. So I thought if I do holes like this, then you could even just use a, um, just even use a, you know, sort of a satin ribbon or a decorative ribbon or whatever. Um, you could also crochet a drawstring to put in here. Um, but at the moment, I've just left it and it's staying like that. So I'm thinking it doesn't need the ribbon. I'm just doing that for decorative purposes, basically. Uh, but I have done it and I'm going to do it here again in case I want to put a ribbon on to make it look pretty. Okay, so... We are going to chain a three, one, two, and three. Then we are going to skip one here and a double crochet in the next stitch. Right? Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next stitch. Chain one, skip one, double crochet. In the next stitch, chain one, skip, double crochet. Okay, see you later. Chain one, skip one, double crochet. Chain one, skip one, double crochet. And as you can see, look, it's forming the side, see? So it's no longer lying flat. But it's now doing what it's supposed to be doing. <laughs> Skip one and yeah, there we go. And we keep going all along. And so now we ha are back to having those 36 stitches. Yes, Petra, I think, you know, um, any, any suggestion, you can let your own ideas, you know, 
loose onto it, basically, you know, sort of um, take your ideas, take the idea that I'm giving you as a starting point, basically. That's what I'm trying to say. And, um, you know, you can always adapt, always change it to what you prefer. Okay, so we have one left here, and then here we are going to do a slip stitch. There we go. Okay, so as usual, look, I shall be trying this out already. It's a little bit tight, oh, but it's better to have to stretch a little bit. Then, yeah, there we go. See, so it's on and it's there. Right, there we go. So put it nicely in the middle and let's try it out. See, look, perfect. Okay, so this works really well. See, I can put them all over, of course. And at the moment, as you can see, look, we've just got that here, right? Just got this um, row where we can thread a in and out we can thread a ribbon to tie it but actually it it looks a little bit unfinished at the moment I don't think it's long enough so like I said we're going to put another row on it but also you could easily put much more on it and do the whole thing right so let's do that okay so put your hook in And <clears throat> let's see. Um, uh, there I just did double crochets. This one I am going to do half double crochets. So chain two. And you put half double crochets in every chain space. And I do two. So two half double crochets in every chain space. In my original one I put two double crochets in every chain space. You know, you could even put uh, single crochets. It doesn't matter. It depends on what you want to do here. <laughs> exactly, Babs. That is what I was going to suggest. So, in the next row, you could do the little scallops like we did in the um, in the eco um, face pad. You know, the jasmine, the floating jasmine flower face pad that's what exactly what i was going to suggest that's a great idea <sighs> i have trained you guys well <laughs> oh, we are having such fun aren't we there we go <laughs> yeah when i kept on looking at this one here I was thinking to myself, that ends so nicely in those shells. I really should put some there. Um, but then you thought, yeah, I sort of thought, that's the, no, that's sort of, I stopped sort of designing at that point. Should I, should I not? Um, oh, yes. If you put fairy lights in there, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. So, yes, yeah, so we are doing... I know, reading each other's minds. Oh my goodness, whatever next. <laughs> okay, so we are going to be continuing doing this. I don't know whether anybody is still actually following on and crocheting along. Right, there we go. And then we are going to, of course, close the round. So chain two, skip that one. Try and go under this one again, wherever you can manage. <laughs> and do your slip stitch. There we go. Okay. So I, again, I am trying it on. Take my jar, put this over. And it shouldn't go on too easy, okay? Okay. Um, Great, great Babs. Right, there we go. So I think this fits really well. Okay. This is looking good. 
Yeah, I like the half double crochet. Look, it's less sort of bulky. Okay. And yes, shall I put the scallops on? Right, let's try. Okay, so scallops. We have 36 stitches. We are going to make scallops. This is unrehearsed, people. <laughs> we are going to make scallops over six stitches. So this is the end of my scallop. We have one, two, and then here, we going into here. So I'm going to do six double crochets. So where you were, where you were, you one, two stitches to skip. Work in the third stitch. You are going to work six double crochets. go one two three four five or should it be five no six there we go then you skip one two and you work in the third and you do just a slip stitch there we go look see and same thing again this might not work out mind you No, this is over five stitches, isn't it? We'll see. We'll do half a scallop somewhere. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Yes, makeup brushes. Perfect. Perfect. Makeup brushes, of course. Wouldn't that be lovely as a present for a young girl? See? We can make so many things out of this. Four, five, excellent idea, yep. And again, you might have to make the holes a bit bigger, but you know, you'll be able to, to do that, I am sure. Look at that, look, look, look. Oh, this is adorable. Okay. Janie, indeed, what about for covering your glass in the summer for keeping bees out and stuff? Yeah, and for potpourri, yes, for a bowl with potpourri in it so it doesn't get all, you know, dusty and everywhere, it doesn't go everywhere, exactly, that's perfect. Let's have a look at how this looks. I'm not finished yet, mind you, but look! Look, adorable, adorable. But I think I might not have enough. Oh well, we'll make it work. We will make it work. Okay. <laughs> yes, keep it. And also, you know, like a bigger bowl, you know, for if you have fruit outside or something like that. And it's washable, of course. Two, four, five, six. One, two, and there. There we go. And then, ah, right. So I'm going to have an extra stitch, but that's okay. One, two, that's fine. I'll, I'll, I can live with that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> that's okay. See, that's the thing with crochet, you can come up with these things and then it doesn't quite work out. Um, but don't worry, you know, nobody is going to see that. So look, so I should be going in here. And I am. And you know what? That doesn't look wrong. OK, so there is an extra sort of stitch there, but nobody can see that. OK, so I'm going to cut off here. You're going, going to have to sew in the ends, of course. I'm not going to do that now. Okay, let's see. Look at that. And look at the pretty border that we did. So, I'm going to transfer all of this into here. So, I've got the nice face pad in the bottom there. I've got my new cover, 
which I'll have to put the ends in. You can, like I said, glue it down if you have decided that's it. You can glue it down with hot glue or even put a ribbon in here, a contrasting colour even, and tie it with a nice bow. That would be pretty for if you have it in a bedroom with your, um, you know, with your makeup brushes. And look at this. Big ones in the middle. There we go. Perfect. Okay, everyone, give me a thumbs up if you liked this tutorial. I am really pleased that we were able to collaborate on this because this is so lovely, you know? Oh, I really loved the fact that we were able to do this together. So, Petra, we used a just a cotton, uh, any leftover cotton that you might have. I think even uh, acrylic would work. Um, an empty jar, an empty tin, an empty mug uh, that you're not using anymore, you know, something like that. And we have discussed quite a few things what you can do with this, not just for your hooks, but also for other things. So I am really, really happy that you all join me for this tutorial. It will come out very soon um, as a normal video, so YouTube will save this and it will be published in a matter of minutes. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you very much for watching. And, oh, dag, my mama is hier ook ze. Maar, we hebben gedaan. It's done. We did the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you are there for the live tomorrow because remember tomorrow we are doing a pamper day and I am going to put on a face mask. Yes, on YouTube, on a live video. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching everyone. Bye. Bye bye. Bye.